I've owned this after 17 years. It just feels really strange having it on again. Like every young girl who dreams about her wedding day, that her Prince Charming will come and take her so that they can lead a wonderful life together. This was the day that my dream about my Prince Charming was coming true. My Prince Charming who was going to come, we were going to get married today and then lead a wonderful life together. My grandfather contacted my parents and he told my parents that this would be a good match because, you know, when I go to Canada, it's, I'm living in a Western world where I'll have all the freedom and be able to be with a man who, who is a man of today. Traditional, but a man who has gone forward in his life and is changing with times. And I was actually really happy and looking forward to coming to Canada. At first, when I found out I was pregnant, it was kind of uh, a shock. He wanted me to be pregnant so that I couldn't step out of the house. Or if I was stepping out of the house, it was within his terms. Why, like, it, he felt if I it went ahead with my education, I might get to know better about the laws and the rules of this country and uh, know more than he would, or maybe more than he wanted me to know. And initially, it was just him saying things where, like in his own way, he was either putting me down or putting my family down. Then slowly he started pushing and shoving me. And at first I was like really shocked. So I remember the first time I think I pushed him back too. And I think that I remember it having gone from a push on my part to him striking me for the first time, like across my cheek. It was always made out to be my fault. Um, sometimes I remember not opening the store on time. Like we had the hours from 7 in the morning till 11 in the evening. And he wanted to sleep in, but I had to wake up and open the store. And if I was late, it was my fault. Or he was angry that we might have lost those customers in the 15 minutes that I was late for, you know, uh, opening up the store. I just find it really sad that this was the man that I loved. I know it was an arranged marriage, but I did fall in love with my husband. He was the father of my child, someone you trust, you know, and it kind of shakes your belief in yourself too. They wanted me to have another child. They wanted to have a son. and. I reached a point where I didn't even like him touching me. So I was fighting him, but I was staying really quiet. I remember him being extremely violent. That, I think, was the day he was the most violent he'd ever been with me. Like there had been other times when his mom... And his sister had held me down and he'd beaten me, but I think that was still more bearable than what he did that night. He um, tried very hard to rip my clothes off. Um, you know, pull my legs apart. He grabbed me by my stomach and he twisted it to the point that I I had like his nails marks kind of got embedded into my stomach and they started bleeding. And he's taunting me. He's going, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to call the police? Oh, go ahead. 
Call 911. If you think you can call 911, go ahead. And in my mind, I'm going, if I call 911 and the police show up, the entire community is going to know what happened because it's such a small community. And and I'm like, I haven't even told my parents so much about it. And what if my parents decide that, you know, you should have talked to us before about it, before you did anything drastic, you know, you've brought shame to us. But when you've been isolated for so long, for nearly six years, not having that many friends, not knowing who to talk to, when you're constantly being told that you're nothing and nobody will listen to you, I think your self-esteem, your self-respect, your confidence just is very, very, very low. But that that was the day that I decided that enough. You know, I have to make some changes. And then you look at your daughter and you go, she doesn't need to be brought up like a second class citizen. And what kind of a role model am I for her? What am I teaching her? I had a lot of thinking to do to decide what I was going to do. Since I had come to Canada, all I had known was having a life with my husband, working for him in his store, staying at the house, and I had a child. It was hard, but I told my parents about it finally, about the abuse. My father came from India and helped me find the support from the community services here. I left my husband to begin my new life with my daughter. Manjire, <laughs> 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 